Okay, well, back tuning into today's video. I'm going to have a look at a few bits and bobs uh, today and have a look at century and temperature. Going to try and decipher what's happening at the end of the week. Very uncertain, uh, sharp. It looks as though the chance of colder weather, uh, easterly winds coming in at the end of the week, is receding actually. Um, but have a look at that in a moment. Have a look at the stratosphere. So there's quite a bit going on. Uh, I'll get on with it all in a moment. Just want to mention the advertising. There's video ads on my pages at gasworthies.com. Hit play on the video ads. You'll be supporting gasworthies.com. Thanks very much uh, for doing that. There's new banner ads as well uh, that you can click through uh, to and go to the advertised website if you're interested in uh, those uh, ads. So uh, yeah, just get involved with the website please because uh, it pays the website uh, by you getting involved with the website uh, and doing all these things it uh, is paying for the website allows me to hint talk to you via website so thanks very much uh, for doing all of that so this would be a uh, radar picture uh, really uh, messy sort of picture again today heavy rain coming across the country as it has so often through this uh, incredibly damp and uh, soggy January I saw yesterday on my Twitter feed that uh, a weather station in Coventry has had its uh, wettest uh, its wettest January since 1939 and that is the wettest it's recorded uh, at the Bay Blake weather station in Coventry um, wettest since 1939 that was the wettest uh, but it, and, uh, that it had recorded to 1870 now whether uh, this January actually beat that uh, at that particular weather station I'm not sure I'll keep you posted on it but certainly a phenomenally uh, wet January across many parts of uh, the country this year and as I say, this is just indicative of what we've been seeing on an awful month. Band of heavy rain sweeping across the country. Lots of heavy showers far along behind. And it's turning cold behind that uh, as well. Some of those showers uh, could turn wintry actually uh, overnight tonight. But a really wet old day of it. Uh, strong winds as well. If you haven't been out, uh, I can assure you, uh, you're not missing much. But it has been a very mild January, despite the fact it's been very wet. As it often is when you have a westerly uh, January and a strong jet stream. It brings the mild air in off the Atlantic. And uh, the current CET anomaly in the central, uh, central, in the central England region uh, from Hadley at the UK Met Office is at uh, 5.9 degrees, which is an anomaly of 2.2 degrees uh, above average. Now, this is all provisional. There will be uh, corrections at the end of the month. Usually, the correction is downwards, but it'll only be downwards uh, by a degree or two. It's going to be a very, very mild January. What happens? Although we're a long way short of the all time record, 7.5 uh, set in 1916. And incidentally, that was another. Uh, very wet and stormy uh, sort of January. Now, we've been seeing some quite interesting uh, developments from the JFS model in terms of the stratospheric uh, forecast. I don't want to go over the top with this uh, because we're looking at the stratosphere, remember, around Christmas, and uh, the forecast for the stratospheric woman that it was going for around Christmas never really, <coughs> excuse me, never really came off so we've got to be careful with this these are extended charts this is in the extended range of the gfs model um and just with all the other charts in the extended range of the gfs model this has to be uh, taken with a huge help warning but it is going uh, for quite a big uh, warming in the stratosphere in fact i think uh, this particular run the six o'clock run of the gfs is going for a, an actual sudden stratospheric warming uh, towards the end of the first week of uh, January. So there we go. As we move through, uh, I'll just move it up so you can see the date. So we move through to the 5th of uh, January. We have got some big warming taking place. And look what happens as we move through to the 6th, 7th, 8th of uh, February. Yep, we're seeing massive warming there taking place around green. We're splitting the polar vortex. The polar vortex is being absolutely destroyed as some of it goes off towards the United States, some of it goes off towards Siberia. Um, and the warming just continues really then as we move through the 8th in to the uh, 9th of February. That is an actual uh, and technical sudden stratospheric warming. There's no messing about with that. That is a huge increase in temperature within a few days. Splits and destroys the polar vortex in the stratosphere. And we end up with this very uh, warm stratosphere over the uh, North Pole. Now, what you've got to keep in mind with this, a few caveats, as I've already explained, is that uh, it's a long way out. It's up the extended range of the uh, GFS uh, model, so it may not come off. It has to be treated with as much scepticism as you do at any other uh, date that you're looking at at 384 hours away. You also have to bear in mind that this is, a, this is for the stratosphere. 
to propagate down into the troposphere, which is where weather is taking place, and to generate blocking, it, there's going to be a time lag. So we're looking at around, say, the 7th, 8th, 9th of February uh, for the sudden stratospheric warming that's going on here. To tr propagate back down into the troposphere, you're probably going to be looking at another two or three weeks at least. So you're getting towards the end of February on into the start of March before probably you start generating blocking uh, over Greenland and over the Arctic. And of course, even if you do generate that blocking, there's no guarantee it's going to sit in exactly the right position uh, to deliver us cold weather. So all of those uh, sort of caveats uh, taken on board. That is a very significant sudden stratospheric warming that the GFS model is going for this morning. It does <coughs> destroy the polar vortex over the Arctic, and eventually it will propagate down to some significant blocking I would assume uh, by the time we get through to the end of February and the start of March so maybe we're looking uh, again at another cold spring it'll be interesting to see how that plays out uh, if it does actually come off now let's come into the uh, more reliable time frame and uh, we're still messing about with this sort of colder weather at the end of the week. This is this morning's latest GFS model game, a 6 o'clock run. There's the low pressure coming southwards on Wednesday. That's the trigger low to introduce cold air. So if we're going to Thursday, it is colder. Low pressure sit low pressure sitting to the south. High pressures up over Scandinavia. And we are bringing in a generally sort of easterly feed. But look what happens as we go through to Friday. The next low pressure sweeps in. There's no resistance to that low pressure and the high pressure over Scandinavia, so that's just a push of wind and rain crossing. The country turns very wet and windy on Friday. The last day of January it would be fitting, I think, that the final day of January uh, ends uh, as it started with a very significant wind and rain coming across the country. That will be a fitting end for this soggy January, but that is wind and rain. It isn't snow. Uh, that's heavy rain coming in across the country because that high pressure is just slipping away to the east. It's not uh, resisting the low pressure at all. Uh, so a very brief cooler incursion around Wednesday and Thursday from the east and then it's mild uh, back to mild stormy wet and windy weather uh, at the end of the week. And that's how we go then into the start of February with low pressure in control. So there's more wind and rain coming in off the Atlantic. We're losing all the blocking up to the north and east. The Scandinavian high is gone. And we actually end up on day 10, uh, the 5th of February, very mild there, southwesterly push, that's coming, if you follow the ice bars back, it's coming up from the Azores, so that's very mild, that's temperatures into double figures, uh, but there'd be more heavy rain sweeping in across the country. At the same time, the E7WF again has that low pressure slipping southwards, uh, so we do briefly bring in a colder easterly wind Wednesday into Thursday, that could bring some wintry conditions, particularly to the east, some wintry showers, don't rule out the chance of seeing some uh, wintry weather this week, uh, but nothing significant, and then as we go through to Friday and on into Saturday. It's the same idea as the GFS, which is the, the which is that the Atlantic very quickly uh, comes back. It turns wet and windy. And that's how we go then into the start of February with Atlantic winds dominating. Same idea as the GFS, actually, but by the 5th of February, day 10, we're bringing up a very mild southwesterly flow, particularly to England and Wales. That could lift temperatures up to at least 10 or 11 degrees, maybe a little bit more uh, to the east of high ground if you get some sunshine. But there are other models. The UK Met Office this morning is still disagreeing with this sort of idea. Uh, here's the chart for Thursday with the low pressure to south bringing that cold easy wind. We do get the easy wind Wednesday, Thursday, so it will turn a bit cold then. But look what happens on Friday. The high pressure is still extending in uh, from the east, so it's still cold for Friday and mainly dry by then. By Saturday, the 1st of February, uh, we are trying to bring low pressure in, but that's a real battle, and that could be giving snow, particularly to the north and the east of the country, because that's coming into that cold air, and the high pressure is much, much stronger over uh, Scandinavia. So that's interesting. The UK Met Office, probably uh, pretty cold, uh, going right to the uh, weekend, uh, and a band of rain coming in, uh, which could give some snow in places. Finally, have a look at the GEM, and that is, again, colder uh, than the ECM and the, U and the uh, GFS. There's below pressure coming southwards through uh, middle of the week, so we've got that easterly flow coming through. Then we bring these weather systems in, but they are 
struggling to come in. Uh, same idea as the UK Met Office. Really, I think there could be some snow uh, in the north and the east in particular with that at the end of week going into Saturday. The low pressure stalls and uh, the high pressure. Look how strong the high pressure is still over Scandinavia. Instead of slipping it away uh, by day 10, uh, we're actually in a bitterly cold easterly wind there on the Canadian model. And uh, if you have a look at the upper air temperatures, look how cold it is on the continent. Uh, that easterly would be pushing our way. Uh, that would be pushing that bitterly cold air our way. So the GM, much, much colder, keeps that Scandinavian high going. Um, and you would suspect that that would be a bitterly cold spell uh, for the first week of February. But of course, the GM is not uh, up there with the GFS of the ECM. The two best models are the GFS and the ECMWF, and they're suggesting that we get that very brief colder incursion uh, Wednesday, Thursday, then Friday the Atlantic will very quickly steamroll through, and uh, we're going to end uh, January on a wet, mildish sort of stormy note, uh, and that's how we'll go into February as well, keeping it very mild, wet and windy. So that's probably the way we have to go, because they're the best models but as long as these other models are churning out these other ideas, you can't discount the uh, prospect that at some point we could get this easterly wind come in and give us a proper easterly blast. Finally, just want to have a look, uh, have a look at the uh, weather for the rest of the day and tonight. This is the high-resolution Euro 4 model uh, from the website Weather Online. This is the high-resolution model from the UK Met Office. Uh, it's replaced the NAE model now. NAE has gone. Uh, Euro 4 has that band of rain coming across the country um, now. Uh, this is the chart for midday, the forecast chart for midday. Snow over the Scottish uh, mountains. It takes that through uh, by the end of the afternoon, so it'll brighten up this afternoon. Uh, there'll be blustery showers and then overnight we're going to see the showers banding together um, and these pink areas are where we've got snow and you notice that even down in the south there is the suggestion that there could be a little bit of snow in some of those uh, heavier downpours, heavy showers uh, through the course of tonight so wintry showers uh, coming across the country tonight I think uh, almost anywhere could potentially wake up to a very slight dusting of snow in the morning but it's not going to be significant, it won't uh, uh, disrupt traffic or anything like that away from the high ground of the Pennines and the Scottish Mountains anyway but just the suggestion that wintry showers could come across the country tonight and that's noteworthy because it's been such a mild winter we've barely had any wintry showers anywhere away from elevation so just the suggestion that if you get up in the morning find a very slight spattering of snow over the lawn uh, don't be all that uh, surprise. That's it for now. Hope you found the video interesting or a bit of an eclectic mix, mishmash of stuff, but uh, hope you found it interesting. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.